Hello all, this is going to be a quick review of question and answer for the Composition 100 course. And we're also going to go deeper into this question and answer with phrases and how they work. Um, so musical questions and answers usually end up on the notes other than the home note or tonic. Or it's musical questions only rather. Musical questions usually end up on the notes other than the home note over tonic. Okay? They often can land on the dominant as one phrase. So you can have something like this. So you have your scales right here and then you've got You have that, um, you have that uh, phrase coming up, and you have that different thing that lands from tonic to dominant, one to five. Fifth degree is the ending of the question. And then the musical answers often take the music from the top of the last phrase and end it on the tonic or home note. That's a musical, those are musical answers. So okay, take the, take the example below. Here's the question. So that can actually be either um, a contrasting or a parallel, which we'll talk about in one of the next lectures. It can always start on one note and end on uh, the home note. It can always start on one note and stay in an upward motion, or go and start down like this does on the tonic and go back up and then go back down the tonic. It's all about contour. So, for instance, you could start on this one. So, it starts on the fifth degree of the C scale G and goes all it goes all the way down almost to to the tonic but doesn't quite get there. It stops on the D and goes back up. And then instead of it starting again on the G, instead of this, you would have it goes from G to C and starts the answer. But notice that all the rhythmic figures are similar. And the way the notes are arranged are a bit similar in the way that the rhythms are formed. So you've got, for instance, you've got these two, this G and the G right here. You've got those two. You've got those two right there. So you have those G. G and G, and C and C at the end. Those are the two rhythmic and um, pitched uh, figures that we look at for similarities in the phrase. Okay? So, questions and answers? Question. And then answer. Now, questions and answers can also be like this. What if I took it this way? That would be what's called a parallel answer. It starts on the same note and then continues. And we'll be going over that in the next lessons here. And so I'd like to continue with 
uh, there being other attributes of a musical phrase or phrases. These could be called questions and answers. That's what we were discussing. Questions have an upward motion, like I was saying earlier, that doesn't usually end on the tonic note. And simple question-answer phrases, they often end on the dominant or the fifth degree of whatever scale it is that the phrase is being based on. For example, if the phrase being played or composed is in C, or based on the C scale, a question would often end on G, like we just saw. Now, this concept is not, as hard, not a hard and fast rule. So, take note. It doesn't have to start on the tonic. It could start on the, the subdominant here. It could start on the dominant, like the last one did. It could start... Um, virtually anywhere on that C scale, but as long as it ends on, uh, as long as the answer ends on the tonic, which is C, then you're fine. So it can be loosely applied. For example, questions could end on F, on A, on B, it depends largely on the bigger compositional structure that the composer is going after. So you could have something that goes something like that. You know, you can have um, instances where you have that sort of differential going on. Let's practice writing some questions and answers. Okay, so how we're going to do this, I'm going to write the first one. Okay, that could be it. Or, let's go to Go to the next measure, this one. Okay, so we have um, a, me uh, a phrase here that starts with the tonic and ends with the tonic. So question could be somewhere around here. And then answer starts on the same note, B, and goes down to C. Let's do an example of a longer one, shall we? Okay. Uh, hey. Okay, question. Okay, answer. So this right here would be question up here, but let's let's play it back. So here's the first one. Oops. Okay, so that's two examples of questions and answers that come up all the time. All right, so now you could see, let, let's practice one more. Let's go to here, and then I'm going to turn on my... Let's see if we can tell where the answer and the question is on this one. Okay. Here's your first question and answer, the short one again. Second one coming up. 
Question. Answer. And question. Answer. Okay, so that wasn't quite, the last one wasn't quite as um, demonstrative of that. But you get the idea. You get the idea on this. Uh, let's try another one. Okay, all right, let's do it. Let's go to this measure and play it back, 17. Okay, so that's a little bit less familiar. So let's play it back. Uh, no, 17. And then answer right there. Okay, then let's try it again. Question. Answer. Okay, so they they typically come in all sorts of different guises here. All right, and you can change. Let's not change rhythms around. Let's do one more. Okay, ready. Got to get my. Okay, so that was one. Can we figure out where the question and where the answer is? Let's see. Let's go up here. Now, for some reason, it's not playing the same things that I'm playing, but we can at least work with this. Let me just, I'm going to add something to the tail end of that. Okay, so there you go. Let's, let's try that from this measure again. I think it's 20, 21. Okay, ready? There you go. So that's another question and answer. Let me play that back one last time. Question. Answer. Good. All right. So that's the questions and answers that we have. If you have any questions, please feel free to consult the Q&A or the comments. And the next video we'll be talking about um, antecedent and consequent phrases.